Hello everyone, this is Dorothy Chia. So I've been teaching for over 30 years and today we're going to do a live marking of the music theory practice paper for 2021 grade 5. So this is from one of my students. So we're going to mark his work and go through uh, the paper. At the same time, I will be explaining as I teach. I hope this is good uh, for everyone. Let's try and see if I can zoom in a bit more. Okay, I'll shift the paper as we go along. Question number one, this is a rhythm question. And the student is asked to circle the correct time signature. So let's look at the grouping. So this is always a grouping question and it tests whether the students um, looking at the music is able to work out um, the grouping of the notes okay so here <clears throat> the first set of uh, grouping we see that this is in a dotted crotchet group but here this is a crotchet so it's unlikely to be in simple time or compound time so that makes it probably an irregular time so if we were to count the quavers, we have one, two, three, one, two, three, and a half and half make four. So four plus three is seven. So this is seven, eight. So that's correct. So this is the grouping. If we count the quaver beats, it's one, two, three, group of three here, and then group of four here, the dot and the semi making one. So all together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven, eight is correct. <clears throat> Moving on. So again, I'm going to look at the notes that are beamed. Okay, so semi, semi makes a quaver, and this whole thing is a dotted quaver. So we're going to try looking at whether dotted quaver grouping will work. So here's another dotted quaver grouping. <clears throat> this one. And here, let me see, semi, semi, and this is demi, semi with a demi, semi. So again, this is a dotted quaver. So here we have three groupings of dotted quaver. So that is a compound triple with each grouping being a dotted quaver. So three dotted quaver is 9, 16. Correct. Here, you see the grouping, the first grouping, the first beam is in one crotchet. <clears throat> the quintuplet here means play five notes in the time of four and that makes it one crotchet. Okay, one, two. All right, here is a bit tricky because here we have a quaver, quaver, then a crotchet. So here we have three, four, five. So all together, there are five crotchet beats. Correct. Okay, so three upon three. Second topic. So here's a bar in simple time and which of the following is the correctly rewritten compound time? So for this question, 4-4 four, four is 4 crotchets. So we're going to change it into 4 dotted crotchets. So if it's 4 dotted crotchets, that make it 12-8. Uh, so when I group it, in compound time, this two will need a duplet 
this 3 will take out the triplet sign, take out the triplet sign, and the crotchet become a dotted crotchet. Okay, so when we look at the answer here, the one that's matching my working would be the middle one. Correct. Okay, <clears throat> and then two general questions. Looking at the sentences, okay, fill in the blanks. So in 6-8 time, um, the duplet sign means play this in one dotted crotchet B. And a brief. So a brief looks like this. Huh? It's actually like a semi-brief, only with two lines at the side. So that's a brief. So one brief like that is equal to two semi-brief. And it's asking you how many semi-quavers make up a brief. So semi-quavers, we know that four semi-quavers make up a crotchet. So all together, you have 16 plus 16 which makes 32 semi-quavers. So this is like a math question plus an understanding of um, a brief. Take one box to show which bar is grouped correctly. Okay, so here this is a grouping question. So you notice that all of them is in four counts. All right, here, and you're going to check is every beam one crotchet beat because you need four crotchet beats so this is correct this is wrong is because you have half here and it's not complete you should have this two semi join here whereas here this is half so you should have this two semi join to this one okay so this student is correct whether it's correct or wrong in each of the boxes. So this is a test on the grouping of rests. <clears throat> so 616, we're looking at two dotted quaver rests. Okay, two dotted quaver beats in a bar. Okay, so they've given you a quaver. So quaver needs a semi that makes one beat. And out of here, this is quaver with a demi. So demi needs another demi. So this belongs to this side. So this is correct. Over here, you have one dotted quaver here. So you're short of another dotted quaver. Now, this part here started with a semi, followed by a quaver. This is a incorrect, okay? Because whenever you have something weak, Actually, the whole beat here just needs a dotted quaver beat. You don't need to split it up. Okay? So this is actually wrong. So the student put a tick. It's wrong. Alright? It should be incorrect. <clears throat> a whole bar rest is used to fill a whole empty bar. So this is correct. So 2 out of 3. Okay? So 3... Six, seven, eight, nine. So this is nine upon ten. The next topic, topic two, pitch. <clears throat> so this is a test of alto clef. So alto clef, as we know, middle C is here on the third line. So we're going to count up from middle C, C, E, G, B, D. So this is D above middle C, correct. Take one box to show N harmonic equivalent. So N harmonic equivalent means that it's a different um, notation, a different notation showing the same pitch. So here, this note here in bass clef, that's an F. So this is E, this is D double sharp, which would give you E, and G double flat, which will give you F. So this is correct. This is the correct answer. One. <clears throat> Take 
Here is the sounding pitch for trumpet in B flat. So here, let's understand the question first. Trumpet in B flat is going to sound a major second down. So it tells you this is the sounding pitch. It is not the written pitch. It is what you will hear when the trumpet in B flat plays. <clears throat> so it's asking you what is the written pitch. So you have to go up a major second. Let's work through the, the answer first. So three sharps make it A major. So A go up a major second. You need B major. So B major, you need five sharps. So there, this one is wrong. So B will go up to C sharp. Oh, this is actually correct. Okay, so the student has marked wrong. <clears throat> G natural. So what it has done is G sharp has become G natural. So you have rate, you have lowered the note. So G will go up to A. Let me see. G will go up to A, correct. Yes. Okay. F sharp will go up to G sharp. So this is wrong. And C sharp will go up to D sharp. So this is correct. So the key signature, one, two, three, four, four out of five. Compare A, B, and C. So you have three uh, samples here. This is in bass clef, treble clef, and tenor clef. All right, and answer true or false. So look at A and C. A and C are at the same pitch. Yes, correct. A is one octave higher. Let's look. No, actually B is one octave higher. So this is false. B is one octave lower. Let's check. This is D above middle C. This is D one octave up. So B is octave B is octave higher. So actually it says here B is octave lower. So this, un this student has misunderstood the question. So the B is actually higher than C. Alright, it is not one octave lower, it's one octave higher. So this is wrong, false. So two out of three. So let's total up the questions. Two, four, six, eight. Key signatures and scales. Take the correct box for D flat major. D flat major scale B E A D G. Battle ends. Wait, let me see. D flat major. A D G. You need five flats. So all of them has five flats. So basically here, we are looking at the one where it is correctly written at the correct uh, spot on the staff. So this one is correct. Okay. And here, F sharp major. So F sharp major, we are looking at F, C, G, D, A, E. Six sharps. So again, all of them have six sharps. Yeah. So, F, C, G, D, A, E. Yes, this is the correctly written one. F, C, G, D, A, E. This is wrong. This is wrong. So, these two are wrong. This looks correct, only that the F sharp should be here. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is not correct. This is the correct one. <clears throat> Circle the correct key of each of the three melodies. So here we have two flats, B flat and E flat, making it B flat major. 
When we have sharps like this, let's go through the order of sharps. Do we have F sharp? Yes. Do we have C sharp? Yes. Do we have G sharp? Yes. Do we have D sharp? Yes. F, C, G, D, A. Do we have A sharp? Yes. E. No, we don't have E, but F, C, G, D, A. F, C, G, D, A. There's no E. All right. And I think we've got all of the sharps there. F, C, G, D, A makes it five sharps. And five sharp is the key signature of B major. Correct. All right. When you see a mixture of flat and sharp, okay, this is usually because this sharp is a raised seventh note in a harmonic minor. So let's check. If this was a seventh note, we are in G minor. And G minor has a key signature of two flats, B flat and E flat. So the answer is G minor. Tick the correct box. So we move forward. Tick the correct box. Um, filling in the blank of where X and Y is for the key of F sharp harmonic minor. F sharp harmonic minor has three sharps. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. Okay, that's the key signature. And then you have to raise the seventh note, which means E becomes sharp. So this is not key signature. This is just seventh note raise. So here, if we go backwards, so this is F sharp, F, G. So we need a G sharp here. And then F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then we have to raise the E, making it an E sharp correct. Circle one clef to form a minor scale. So this minor scale can be natural minor, harmonic minor, be melodic minor. Usually the clue would be to check where the semitones are, right? So let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, so this is correct. It's in bass clef because then that would make this a B flat and it's a B flat harmonic minor. Descending minor, so if this was C sharp minor, C sharp minor will have four sharps. Okay, this is C sharp natural minor. All right, or you could say it's C sharp melodic minor descending because then you only have that four sharps. And this one here. So if we are in treble clef, that makes E flat. Mi fa so fa ti do re mi. Okay, so that's a um, harmonic minor of E flat minor. So three marks here. Circle true or false for each of these sentences. This is correctly written chromatic scale starting on B flat. So we have to go through every single note and see if it would go up um, using all the black and white keys of your chromatic scale. G sharp, A, A sharp. Okay. Actually, um, the student wrote false, but actually it's true because, um, okay, no doubt this is B flat and it ended on A sharp. If you want to be very fussy, this would have to be B flat, okay? But if you look at each of the notes, it does make a chromatic scale. And A sharp is enharmonic of B flat. This is a correctly written chromatic scale starting on B flat. Hmm. And the student has written false. Um... Technically, it still made a chromatic scale, okay? It started on B-flat, it didn't end on B-flat, but A-sharp is also B-flat. So, it is a chromatic scale on B-flat, but is it correctly written? So, if you want to be very fussy, okay, <clears throat> this note should have been a B-flat. So, this one is a very vague answer because um, it could be true and it could be false. So I would still give the student correct because you want to be very, very accurate. A scale must start and end on B flat. Start on B flat and on B flat.
okay so even though you see a sharp and a sharp has the same sound as b flat this is in theory you are expecting to see b flat and not an a sharp but if you go by the sound if i were not doing a theory exam then this would have been uh, true okay but because it's a theory exam you're looking at what you see on the paper i would say false because this should have been a b flat this is a correctly written chromatic scale on f let's try it out correct okay so two marks circle true or false for each of the statement this is the leading note so the leading note in e flat major we're looking at the seventh degree which is d the note d so this is the note d so true sub median so we're looking at the sixth degree so in d major d e f g a b we're looking at b and the, the note here is shown b flat so this is false Dominant or B-flat minor? Okay, this is a trick question because it's trying to see if you um, read the correct clef. Yeah, B, C, D, E, F and B-flat minor. B, E, A, D, B, E, A, D, G, B, E, A, D, G. So yes, you are looking at F. So here we have C, A. So this is false. Okay. Had it been a uh, treble clef, it would be correct, but you are looking at bass clef, okay? So you have to read the clef carefully. Let's tally up our, our subtotal. 3, 5, 8, 10, 13, 14, 15. Next topic, intervals. Take 1 for each of the named intervals. Okay, this is B flat. This is a compound interval, B to F. B to F is perfect, but B became flat, so we became as an augmented, and because it's more than one octave, it's compound augmented fifth. D to F. D to F sharp is major, D to F is minor, D to F flat makes it diminish. A flat to F, A, B, C, D, E, F is a six. Okay, so in A flat major, does F exist? Yes, so it's a major 6. Circle the type of each interval. So here this note is F. Uh, this is E flat. It's a compound interval. F, G, A, B, F, G. Okay, this is a compound second. F to G flat makes it a uh, minor compound minor second all right here you have to take note of the key signature so you have five sharps here so this note is e this note is a sharp so e to a is perfect fourth and a is sharp so makes it augmented here this is an octave so octave is perfect all correct here you have to write the note above the given interval to make the interval form okay put it above compound diminish fourth the note here is a g flat okay g flat g a b c so we are looking at oh no 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 compound diminish g to c is perfect g became flat so you should have c flat and we want diminish so you should go C double flat. So this is not correct. So you should go to C double flat. Let's look at this one here. We want a minor 6. This note is in bass clef, B flat. 6, B, C, D, E, F, G. B flat to G is major. To make it minor, we need to go G flat, not G sharp. So this is wrong. Major 10th, so this is a compound interval. So FGA, to make it a compound, major 10th. FGA, you're looking at an A. 
f to a will be major. So you this this student has counted up to g. So this is not correct. So this student needs to study intervals. Although the other topics are correct, when it comes to writing, it's a bit careless. Treble clef, this note is C, so we want an augmented seventh. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, so we need B, C to B is perfect to make it augmented. Uh, no, C to B is major. C to B is major. To make it augmented, C to B sharp, correct. So this is correct, one. Okay, subtotal, three, six, seven. Next topic, chords. So here, writing whether it's chord 1, 2, 4 or 5. No sharp, no flat, so we're in the key of C major. So the student has done some working here at the side. GBD, chord 5, Re, Fa, La, chord 2, CEG, chord 1, GBD, chord 5, F, A, C, C, D, E, F, chord 5. Four, correct, all five. And here, marking the cadences. So this is a test of whether they understood the cadence. So in F major, this FAC is called 1. And FGAB is called uh, BDF, called 4. So this is 4-1 uh, is a plagal cadence. So this student has written imperfect. That's wrong. All right, so in the key of D major, D, F, A, this is called 5, and D, E, F, G, that's called 4. 4, 5 is an imperfect cadence. So 1 out of the 2, correct. Label the 3 marked chords. So we are in A flat major. So here we have B, D, F, A, B, that's a chord 2, with B at the bottom, root position. Yeah, A, B, C, D, D, F. A with D at the bottom, so that's a chord 4 root position. A, B, C, D, A, C, E with E at the bottom, that's a 1 with a second inversion of chord 1. So all three are correct. 5, 8, 9, 1 incorrect. Terms and signs. So this one you have to know the meaning. And you notice they are of um, different language. So Traurig is uh, German, okay, and I highly recommend this book, uh, First Steps in Music Theory uh, by Eric Taylor. So there is a chapter at the end here which has uh, French terms and German terms. So uh, Traurig should be here. It means sad and the student has written sad, correct. Cantando. Cantando is actually in a singing style. Okay, so the student has written calm. That's not correct. Let me check. It's not in the grade 5 list. Let me check grade 4. Usually I tell all my students that when you study uh, for your grade 5, it includes all the terms that came before. So it came in the grade 4 list. So the meaning cantando. Cantando is singing. Okay. So the student has written calm. Lent. Lent is slow. Okay. So they gave you two terms that is very close. One is slow. One is rather slow. The correct answer should be slow. So here, this is in the French term of the grade 4 list. So Lent is slow. Okay, so this is wrong. Although it's quite close, this should be the correct answer. And singing should be the correct answer. Tick the box to name the um, ornament. Da -da -dum. So this is a modern, but there are two types of modern here. Is it an upper modern or lower modern? 
Upper modern would go up, da da dum, and lower modern would go da da dum. So this is the lower modern. All right, da 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 dum. This is a turn. Okay, so that's correct too. So here we have a series of questions that's on the instruments of the orchestra. Harp is a string instrument. Yes. Uh, Glockenspiel produces sounds of indefinite pitch. That's not true. Glockenspiel will sound definite pitch. Baritone is lower than tenor. Correct. Okay, so vocal range is uh, tenor, baritone, bass. So baritone is lower than the tenor. Clarinet is single read, correct. And the student has written false. So there's usually some confusion here. Oboe is double read, bassoon is double read, but the clarinet is single read. So it should be correct. Trumpet can play more than one note. No, cannot. Any kind of wind instrument cannot play more than one note. So two. Two, four, five. This is not very good. So the student needs to study this topic. Okay. Last question. Looking at uh, the context of the given musical score, then answering the questions. So let's look at this one. So here, looking at the following bars to bar 5, so looking up to here, yeah, of the right hand piano part. So this, you're looking only at the right hand of the piano part. A and C are one octave lower. Let's look. One octave lower. Of bar 5. Yes, this is uh, one octave lower, this one. This is also one octave lower, this one. This is also one octave lower. So all three are octave lower. Yeah, so all three are one octave lower. So this is the correct answer. Okay. So here, the music is compound jubile time. 2-4 is not compound. 2-4 is simple time. The, lower, the lowest note in the music is B. So here again, we are looking at the right hand. Lowest note is B. Okay, it doesn't say which part. So I suppose it's the whole thing. So here, this is the lowest note. Let's see what note this is. Um... Two lines down the C. C A G. This note is G. So this is wrong. Alright, false. There are six dotted quavers in the right hand part. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. All the notes in the music can be found in the key of G major. Um, there's a C sharp in the score. So G major does not have C sharp. So it's false. The speed is very fast. Andantino is uh, faster or slower than walking speed. So it's not very fast. So again, false. Okay. That's kind of general knowledge here. Yeah? Test your general knowledge. Which instrument is best suited to play one to four of the right hand part? Okay, so here you have to look at the clef as well as the range of the notes. So usually it's quite obvious in the choices they give you because double bass would use bass clef. This uses treble. Timpani usually cannot play a passage like this and tuba uses bass clef. Okay, so if you're looking at the right hand part, you're looking at something that can play treble clef. So the note, there's only one choice, is the oboe. So this is incorrect. How many times does a dominant note? So dominant note of G major 
we are looking at G A B C D. We are looking for the number of times D is sounded. Here you are looking at the left hand part. Left hand part. Okay, so let's count. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's total of eight times correct. Complete the following two sentences by adding a number to each of the blank. Bar 6 has the same pitch and, and rhythm as which by the student has written bar 5. Let's take a look. Bar 6 and bar 5. Same pitch and rhythm. Yes, correct. There's a trill at bar 7. So here, there's a trill at bar 7. Correct. So 2. Let's total up two, three, eight, nine. Okay, we are going to add up the grand total now. So for this, I usually use a calculator. Don't know if you can see. Okay, here. Yeah. All right, then. Okay, let's just add it up. Nine plus five plus. 9 plus 7 plus 15 plus 8 plus 9 equals. So this student has gotten 62 marks. Okay, looking at the grand score, you need 50 to pass. The whole paper is made up of marked out of 75. To get a distinction, you need to get 65 and above. 60 and above is a merit. So this student has gotten 62, so he got a merit for this paper. Not bad, but there's room for improvement. So I hope this has been helpful to you and in and my explanation makes it clearer for all the students working on their grade 5 theory test paper. So that's it for today. Bye-bye.